Numbers 4, verse 5 through 6 in the New American Standard Bible, a porpoise skin is unclean. I'm surprised it's used to cover the Ark of the Covenant. After more research, the Hebrew takash says fine leather. It's not animal specific. Why would Hebrew scholars choose this as an acceptable translation? Well, they they would choose that because the meaning of porpoise skin is nothing more than a conjecture. I mean, the you know, takash here, it, it, it's, uh, you know, to be, to try to make this succinct and so, some of these things don't really translate, translate well to, uh, you know, to being verbal on a podcast, but uh, I'll, I'll take, take a stab at this. This word, this Hebrew lemma has for many scholars, you know, they've, they've argued that it has an, an Akkadian background and ultimately, therefore, a Sumerian background. Now, ESV renders it goat skin. Again, uh, Dana mentioned animal skin. Some other scholars, like Milgram in his commentary, opt for yellow-orange, like a color, as the meaning of takash. And, and both the color and the sort of neutral animal skin idea really comes from the assumed uh, etymology, the assumed, the assumed bringing in of this word from the outside, Akkadian and Sumerian, into the Hebrew lexicon. The, the, here, here's how it goes. There is a term, dushu, okay, and that refers to a stone of a certain color. And so, again, you have to have a little bit of, of Semitic language background here. You say, well, what dushu doesn't sound like takash. Well, that, that's true. But you can have a word in one language that doesn't have all of the consonantal similarities in another language still speak of the same object. I mean, we have this today in modern languages, and it, and it, it often works that way in the ancient world. Uh, there, you know, every Akkadian word, for instance, doesn't share the same consonants as every Hebrew word. Akkadian is Semitic, Hebrew is Semitic, but Akkadian is Eastern North, Hebrew is Northwest Semitic. They're different. There's geography to it. There's different language groups and dialects and sub subgroups and all this sort of stuff. The reason why this seems like a good correlation is you have dushu, and that comes from Sumerian du shi a. That is alignable to a Hurrian word tuk sive. So now you're getting into the takash sort of phonological neighborhood. So by virtue of Akkadian and Hurrian, this is what would be like the, the Newsy dialect is Hurrian. You may have heard of the Newsy tablets when it comes to the patriarchs. Because Hurrian and Akkadian sources align these two things, Dushu and Tuxive, okay? Because they align those terms to speak of the same thing, scholars take that, they notice the, the correlation with the, the Hurrian dialect. And they say, okay, well, that, that sounds a lot like takash. And let's go look and, and see what that meant in Akkadian. And Akkadian referred to a stone of a particular color. And so some scholars would, would argue that takash refers to the particular color that resulted from dyeing leather. There you get your animal skin idea. Dyeing leather um, in, in the culture. Now, you notice in all of that, we didn't say anything about dolphins or porpoises. I don't know. I don't know of anybody who would really defend that idea. The, the, the whole porpoise skin, you know, that it probably. I, I hate to put it this way, but it probably comes from older English translations or, or you know traditions about the translation. Um, however, to, to be fair, uh, Levine, I, I you know I, I've looked this up in Levine's Numbers Commentary, and he says that quote. Dolphin skins were used quite extensively in the ancient Near East and in certain cults. That's what he says. He doesn't really he doesn't ever say that that this term means that, but he happens to discuss that at one point in his commentary. So we don't really know why porpoise skin or dolphin skin would would be an acceptable translation here etymologically. Again, if and if you're doing the comparative Semitic vocabulary, it seems that a better option is either to translate it as the thing being dyed, i.e. the animal skin, or the color that results. 
And so that's where you're going to you're going to find most commentators land again because of Akkadian and Sumerian and the and the Hurrian linguistic evidence. So again, having said all of that, I can't find any passage where this lemma takash occurs in a description of something unclean. A takash doesn't occur in Leviticus at all, for example. So I don't really know why the unclean element uh, is part of the conversation. Uh, maybe if under the assumption that we're dealing with a porpoise skin and that relates to some other animal group. I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I didn't, I don't want to sit here and, and search through everything. Um, that, that makes for a really boring podcast, but again, a quick search of the lemma. Uh, it, it doesn't occur in any passage that names unclean things. So I'm not really sure uh, why, again, that's part of the question, but I thought I'd throw that out there. You know, maybe some people thought it was unclean because, again, Near Eastern cults use dolphin skins and then they just made that correlation. Okay, well, that, I, I could see how you would get there then. But the fact of the matter is, if you actually look up this lemma's usage in the Hebrew Bible, it doesn't occur in, in passages that list that. I mean, maybe it has a homograph, I, I don't know um, at, at this point. But again, from what I, what I do know, you know, just fielding the question, um, that's how I would answer it.